in uh, December, lots of documents were leaked which show the pressure uh, imposed by the U.S. government on behalf of Hollywood on Spain to basically change the, uh, the law. Uh, and you see all these games behind the scenes and all those rich people using politicians to do their games and to try and change the, the law in Spain. So basically Spain has for a while been one of those kind of almost havens in some senses for certain activities online. Uh, which of course isn't allowed based on the those who assume you know to have a uh, superior right to override the laws of other countries. Uh, and now I don't really know what the law is, but I can imagine it's a bit like Adobe and uh, and the uh, digital digital agenda slash digital type. In the UK, it's called the uh, we we call it digital. Uh, what's the bill? What's what's the bill called? Uh, uh, Digital Economy Act. Yeah, it's just euphemisms, of course. And uh, so, so the whole notion of trying to punish people and to even kick them off the internet when they do certain things—that's that's just really quite outrageous. And the United Nations came out with a statement against that, and saying the in access to the internet is, should be treated as a human right. Uh, and if if they cut you off the internet, they take away your human rights in the same way that perhaps in a uh, uh, you know trying to deprive you from access to food. Even if you're a uh, convicted felon, it's just not something that's acceptable. Um, well, what I would just add uh, very briefly to that is uh, anybody listening that may not uh, know about the Digital Economy Act, it's it's a little bit in a state of limbo at the moment. And this legislation, um, which has been already passed, it was rushed through Parliament uh, last year, it's still to come into operation and basically gives a three strikes type ruling um, on people caught or allegedly caught. Um, downloading and transferring copyrighted material. The problem with it being, and, and I don't think this is brought into the mainstream enough, if we put aside anybody's views on the exchange of data and whether people believe that uh, data should be free or whether there should be a thing such as copyrights or whatever, if we put all that to one side for a minute and just look at how much of a logistical nightmare it would be to actually control or to try and monitor the amount of data that's passed through the net to ensure that it wasn't infringing or allegedly infringing on any on anybody's copyright is well it, it is a nightmare we have to just look very recently at the case with ACS law where they attempted to bring 27 people to court on a, on a similar type of allegation of copyrighted material um, the hoops that were having to be jumped through and net result of it was that the whole case fell apart anyway. Now if you imagine that on a, on a UK wide scale with people deny, you know, having the right or hopefully having the right to, uh, to appeal any, any allegation against them, you can see that this isn't going to be a practical solution and this legislation that was recommended and uh, passed through really is completely unworkable and it's unworkable to the expense of the taxpayer because we're the ones that are going to have to fund this this policing of the internet and exchange of data. So it, it's something that everybody should be concerned about because there will be somebody who has to suffer the, the bill of this. Actually, yeah. maybe a bit worse than that. <clears throat> What's going to happen, uh, um, it's a bit like the war on drugs. Basically, you, you try to utilize certain methods of uh, of trying to you know win the war against drugs, but all you, all you do is make the enemy change strategies and, and do something that's a bit more uh, expensive to battle. Uh, so in the case of uh, well, let's say let's say that the, the bill wasn't really supposed to disconnect people from the internet, but just to provide the fear and the deterrence so people won't do that. Well, what will they do next? Well, they'll go encrypt it because they'll say, well, I don't feel comfortable doing that, uh, so I'll just go encrypt it, or I'll just swap hard drives with my neighbor. Mm. Oh, I mean, the, the thing is, the Roy, I mean, we just have to look back 15 years, um, maybe a little bit more. My maths is probably not very good, and my memory is probably even more fuzzy but if you look back to the days of 16-bit machines when the net wasn't uh, wasn't about people were still trading files and trading what would be deemed as um, infringing copyright uh, material by sticking discs into a jiffy bag and putting them through the post and gigabytes of uh, possibly not gigabytes megabytes of data certainly were exchanged all the time um, through jiffy bag trading um, it's something that's that's always it existed. It's not. Um, it, it's not a new concept, and there's always a way around. Um, whatever anybody brings in or introduces, that's that could threaten to uh, to stop that um, that transfer of data. There's, like I say, for the example, there's a jiffy bag trading which people could use if uh, if peer to peer was was seen as too risky in inverted commas. There's uh, IRC. You've got news groups. You've got all sorts of different. Um, 
options open to you. And this is the point. It's not so much whether it's right or wrong, um, because we're going to put that to one side, because that's a whole separate argument. But it's more to do with whatever anybody comes up to try and to quell this surge of uh, of data being exchanged, there's always somebody else that's going to turn around and say, right, well, we'll do it this way, and then you start again from scratch or, or from the beginning. So it, it's a completely fruitless battle. I think um, if they want to start fighting the copyright um, infringement and people sharing files over online, they want to start looking at their own business models first and start offering customers value for money maybe. They maybe want to start offering customers methods of uh, purchasing material which customers want. Maybe it be online, maybe it's via it's streaming, maybe it's via download, DRM free download. But they do need to take into account the customer's, uh, the customer's viewpoint because at the end of the day, it's uh, the person either turns into a customer or somebody who trades the uh, the material without paying any money. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it, it's an interesting topic, but I don't think it's going to be solved with threats and um, disconnections because of the fact that it's so well, so very. Well, they pass the costs to the public. Basically, yeah, it's very convenient for them to do so. Um, it'll, it, it'll come back to the public anyway, Roy, because at the end of the day, if the ISPs have to foot some of the bill towards policing this and dealing with this type of uh, mass amount of data, it's going to it's going to end up being um, being on the foot on the bill of the end user yeah. anyway, because the ISP um, subscriptions will just go up. So um, it's a, it's a very sad state of affairs. It's certainly not the way to deal with um, the piracy problem, in my opinion. Yeah, it's just complicated in all sorts of ways. But this is interesting, though, because uh, I was thinking if, if they want to charge people for listening to a song, uh, and lots of people listen to songs all the time, some of them might be free songs, some of them might be something on the radio. Now, if they lower the price of songs that they sell, at least they can, instead of having a basically uh, a world full of children, who are all basically infringers and so-called criminals and pirates, uh, they could have people who are legally <clears throat> getting access to music at affordable pricing and actually getting the same music legally. But instead of instead they choose to pay lots of people is doing something illegal. I, I personally listen to uh, I listen to lots of very very old music even before the copyright was valid, uh, and I, I listen to lots of Creative Commons stuff. But I know lots of people who are constantly listening to things they get for you know for free. And obviously, it's copyright infringement. But the fact is. <clears throat> instead of the uh, instead of the music labels trying to uh, legalize the market and to make money out of that in the same way that drugs in some cases we legalize drugs like alcohol and you know the government makes lots of money out of alcohol by putting a tax on it and regulating this type of thing they could do something similar with uh, in general with with copyright and material mm. and the thing I had this is interesting I, I had this argument for, for whatever reason that this ISP came to, came, came to me on Twitter and started really trolling me, really harassing me, uh, and I wasn't sure why. It was basically assuming that I uh, was against uh, traffic shaping, uh, which it was. And he took it very personally when I said I'm against traffic shaping, I think it's not necessary. And he, he, he presumed that I was doing something like torrent, and I told him I never use torrent. I maybe use torrent to get Creative Commons stuff once and legally, legally download the torrents. But the uh, that was just twice, or I think uh, you get them in chunks of six gigabytes or so. Uh, and basically, he was trying to accuse me and to try and demonize me and insult me as a potential customer uh, instead of uh, instead of listening to the arguments. And he carried on and on. And I basically told him, well, there is no reason to assume that people are doing something illegal with the internet, and if they look for a good service and for people to give them good bandwidth in general. Uh, to be willing to pay for it, mm. uh, and and he he had so much. In he basically was saying that the ISPs don't get paid enough, uh, and that they have a very hard business with very thin margin, and it's people like myself who are basically using. I most of my internet bandwidth basically goes to SSH because I do lots of SSH with uh, X forwarding, which I have to do for my work. Uh, but some people are perfectly are against that, uh, even though they could expand the network and actually enable people to do their work more efficiently. So yeah, it's 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 a bit like that. Well, have you got uh, another track you would like to uh, to put on for the show? Yeah, I have to look up the, uh, the list to actually find out the names of these because I, I I have these list of things uh, songs that I listen to and plan to have on the song. So right, the next one is uh, Volcano, and the band is uh, Anti Pop Consortium. <laughs> 